cliches are, of course, as the late Terry Pratchett observed once, the screwdrivers and hammers in the toolbox of conversation. That may not be exactly to the um, last word what he said, but it's the mate. It gets across the point that a cliche still makes sense of a, a complicated um, concept at times. With that said, here's a cliche: history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes, and never more more so than recently with the protests on numerous college campuses where we have live updates here from CNN. I don't think CNN is so popular with European or British viewers like myself, but of course, since it's in the US, I've been watching it. Um, I will admit I've looked at Fox, and in fairness, I should probably look at it as well to look across the board, but something about Fox's coverage... um, Hurts my brain in in large doses. CNN at least makes an attempt to, to present an, a report, not not something that is that shrill. Student protesters of history are pushing for Columbia University to divide, divest. According on over the week, other pro Palestinian student groups at Columbia University has been for the school to withdraw investment funds, what they can describe as companies profiting from Israel's war in Gaza. Columbia's endowment is worth $13.6 billion and is managed by a university-owned investment firm. Quite a bit of money there. The request from a coalition of student groups behind the movement includes divesting endowment funds from several weapon manufacturers and tech companies that do business with Israel's government. Of course, the question I might chuck back at them is that what other um, governments does it do business with or other organisations that probably are ones you could raise moral qualms about? I doubt Israel is the only one. I'd certainly raise moral qualms about Israel's issues. I have many moral qualms I'd be raising at this point, in fact, about the way that whole um, policy of war has been um, carried out there where it's dragging on and on and on. And then Nahu does not strike me as a leader who knows when to quit with that. And he seems to be using it as a kind of nationalist bloodletting circus of basically a variation on, you know, giving bread and entertainment to the poor to buy himself some votes. But... Having said that, there are few nations on earth ringed by hostile groups like the, the Israelis. It's not for me to say that uh, to sit here comfortably in East London and talk like that. I'm not surrounded by a ring of hostile nations about to attack me, so there's pluses and minuses. With that said, I'm not particularly happy about seeing this uh, weekend of protests on university campuses. As other news reports have pointed out, there's that's there's bad echoes there of the late sixties and Vietnamese protests over the Vietnamese War, and things like the infamous Kent State shootings. Now, those will have fallen out of the mind of most people who are under my age group, and certainly many of the students there, even though they're obviously going to be from the more educated end of society are only going to be aware of them vaguely or via their parents, perhaps, or of songs by Neil Young. But I, I'm wondering if this is going to end in some horrid tragedy like this, if it keeps pushing. Some of the footage um, in the last few days with state troopers chucking students about and bouncing them around was not very pleasant to watch. The young, over-idealistic students, perhaps, are a bit, you know, with it and a bit te- tend to be a bit of the mindset they can change the world with a protest. That's part of being 18 to 25-ish. Goes with the territory. Watching a, a state trooper who's six foot plus uh, with a big buzz cut chucking students about, well, it didn't look exactly good. It was it wasn't a, a thrilling look to see. Protests at U- the university show no signs of slowing over the weekend. With more arrests on campus and a brief skirmish between pro Israeli and pro Palestinian demonstrators at California Zakla, where a tent in camera was set up last week, 
these ten encampments again, my mind is divided. Obviously, they present problems from the university's point of view because you've got a load of people living on tents outside the university, the university security and on-site services have to deal with that and it presents all sorts of issues. But then again, I'd rather have that than see kids being beaten in the head. I'm not That doesn't exactly fill me with any joy seeing youngsters in their late teens and early 20s getting a smack from a baton or something or any of that kind of thing. If they're a bit mouthy and that, I'd expect policemen to be able to handle themselves and deal with a bit of shoutiness. I've had plenty of it. I've worked in similar occupations and had plenty of that in my face. If you can't control yourself, you shouldn't be doing that, really. You shouldn't be standing there. You have to be... It comes with the territory of security or police officer. It's part of the game. Mike Johnson's not helping matters either with his rhetoric, I should have known. Not exactly the most uh, thrilling man I, I, I know for his rhetoric. Here's some more US college protesters, hundreds more arrested across US in Gaza campus protests. Now, of course, I am aware, of course, that photos can be taken out of context and you need to see the whole thing to know what's going on here. For all we know, someone's punched, someone taking a swing. And if you've ever watched a lot of CCT footage, all you need to know is if you freeze one image, you can get a very distorted view of what's actually really happening. Pro-Palestinian off protesters are arrested, trespassing charges. Here we go. If you trespass, you're probably going to get arrested. It's becoming all very heated and unpleasant out there, and... I notice it's slowly spreading to English universities with reports at the Russell Group universities. Earlier, there were chaotic scenes on the campus of the University of Texas in Austin as hundreds of local and state police on horseback holding batons dispersed protesters. Ooh, yeah. Governor Greg Abbott deployed the National Guard to stop the demonstrators from marching through campus saying they belong in jail. What, for protesting, Greg? Because they disagree with you? I probably wouldn't agree with all their points. I might think they're a bit student radical because they youth, but if it comes to that and you're going to tell them they belong in jail for protesting, I'll go and stand with them rather than stand with somebody saying they belong in jail. The freedom to protest is part of, of what I'd regarded as a, a society I wish to live in, even if they're saying something I don't agree, agree with. Social media footage shows officers pushing into the crowd while warning demonstrators on loudspeakers to leave the premises of face arrest. I command you in the name of the state of Texas to disperse. 34 people were arrested. Ooh, dear. Let's see how it all works out. I'm hoping we don't end up with any real disasters or tragedies, or especially given the hugely polarised state of... US politics, which seems to be kind of drifting over here. We already had had enough polarised situations o over the course of my lifetime in the UK without the Americans' polarised politics drifting over even further. 